Cornelius Burkel, the CEO of Savant Technology. I'm here to take you through our quick treatment guide of our Stimpod NMS460. This will involve a quick setup and we will show you typically how to place a reference electrode as well as a treatment probe and how to set the settings on the device. However, before we start with that, you need to understand that the success of your treatment is 99% dependent on your clinical evaluation of the condition understanding which nerves are affected, understanding the complexities of pain to understand which part or which nerve is affected by nociceptive pain as opposed to neuropathic pain. Um, subsequently, you need to have a sound understanding and, and knowledge of the anatomy of the nerves, especially to know where the superficial aspects are of the nerves that, are, that you want to treat so that you can establish the general treatment area. Uh, this information we will elaborate on, on separate treatment protocols um, and subsequent videos that we, will, that we will endeavor to post on this website. Right, let's start with setting up your device. Once you've identified the treatment area, uh, using the stim pod is actually extremely simple. The first step, obviously, is to switch your device on and that is the on button. Secondly, we will be looking at the pulse width. Now you will see the displayed pulse width over here and the corresponding button that addresses that is situated over here or positioned and you'll see the actual pulse width symbol on the button. So you have two options. You've got a 0.1 milliseconds and a 2 millisecond option. We recommend that you start at a 0.1 millisecond um, as this is the least amount of energy that you can transfer to your patient regarding pulse width. The second button that we'll be looking at is the frequency button. Now, once again, the frequency is displayed over here, and this is the corresponding button. You'll see the hertz displayed there and the hertz on the, on the button as well. So we recommend, there's a couple of different options. We've got one hertz, two hertz, five hertz, and 10 hertz. We just recommend 2 Hertz for most of your applications. So the next step would be to apply gel to the target area just for the purpose of demonstration and because we can fit it into the screen at the setup here, we are going to find and stimulate the ulnar nerve, which is over here. Okay, the associated muscle to the ulnar nerve is the adductor pollicis um, so we, we're going to look for a fasciculation of this area once we've accurately targeted the ulnar nerve. So because we're going to treat that area, I'm going to take a little bit of conductive gel and apply it to the general area. Now, the next step is to connect the reference electrode. Now, it's important for the reference electrode to be some distance away from the treatment area to ensure that the current does not st stay on the surface, so it allows it to penetrate deeper. Um, usually we would actually recommend it to be contralaterally. Uh, again, for the purpose of this video, we just extended it as far as away from the treatment area as possible. So you'll take the red electrode clip and clip it onto the reference electrode. All right, we are now ready to start with our treatment. Okay, in order to start, we are gonna press the center button here, uh, which has got the pause symbol on it. Once we press that, you'll see a couple of things happening to the unit. The first thing is the countdown timer over there will start counting down the default 10 minutes on which it comes out, the setting that it's defaulted on. Secondly, you'll see on the warning screen here, a uh, warning that tells you that an open circuit is detected. That'll disappear the moment that you touch the skin with the treatment probe. Thirdly, you'll see the red LED pulsing at 2 Hertz, which is the setting of the frequency. This will change to green once I touch the screen, which also tells you that there's now a closed circuit condition. And you'll also hear an, an audible feedback once I touch the skin. I will now target the area that I want to treat, so in this case the ulnar nerve, which I'll expect 
Based on my general anatomical knowledge that the most superficial area of the ulnar nerve which will extend over here will be in this area. Okay, you can now see once I touch the skin that the LED starts pulsing green. The warning screen has disappeared over here and you hear the audible feedback. I will now slowly start to increase the current until I can start to see a fasciculation from my, from my patient. Okay, I will expect to start seeing something around 8 milliamp based on where the nerve is and you can see just with a slight adjustment I was able to get that fasciculation of the, the adductor pollicis. Now I'm going to move it around a little bit to see where the most superficial aspect of the nerve is. Okay. It's also worthy to note that the tip of the probe, um, because of the shape, the current density is focused at the tip and it, it is a little bit directional. So we recommend that you, you can angle it in different directions and you'll see, you'll see how the intensity of the contraction or the fasciculation actually changes. Another thing that's important to realize um, is once you start stimulating the patient, the harder you press, the, the firmer the contact with the skin is, the more comfortable it will be to the patient because a bigger surface area of the tip will be touching the skin and thus the current density will be less. Um, our intuitive way to touch the skin is to touch it as lightly as possible. but in doing so you actually increase the current density and it's a little more uncomfortable for the patient. Right, so let's find that ulnar nerve again. Okay, now once we're here, we found the ulnar nerve, we are now going to increase the stimulation intensity up to a point where the patient can tolerate it. I'm going to ask my assistant to uh, increase the current and then I'll look at the face of my patient to see what is tolerable. Now because this is a very superficial nerve and we get such a good contraction, um, it's really not necessary to extend way past what we currently have, which is 15 milliamps. However, if your patient is able to go up to 30 milliamps, we would then recommend that you take the current back down to 15 milliamps, increase the pulse width by pressing the pulse width button to 0.2 milliseconds and then slowly start to increase the, the current again up to 30 milliamps. If your patient is able to take 0.2 milliseconds at 30 milliamps, that is the maximum electronic or electromagnetic dosage, if you will, that this device can deliver. You will also see that in the case of, um, because most of the nerves that we will stimulate will be both sensory and motor nerve bundles combined, uh, the patient will also get a sensation once you treat the nerve. If it's a, a nerve that is affected by a neuropathic pain condition, it's noteworthy to know that the, if you identify the nerve and treat the nerve in the, the way that we currently are, um, on a neuropathic nerve, then the sensation will be a very comfortable sensation. When you treat a nerve which is not suffering from a uh, neuropathic pain, uh, it's typically the sensation of a, a pinprick, which, which is definitely more uncomfortable. So the fact that we have a different sensation on a nerve suffering from neuropathic pain uh, actually can assist you with the diagnosis. Uh, so th there are a couple of trigeminal nerve, uh, nerves that are purely sensory and you will be reliant on your patient telling you where the strongest sensation is when you, when you locate the nerve in the way that we did now. Um, the motor nerve is very simple, you just move around the probe until you get the strongest uh, contraction and then you know that's the most superficial aspect. Um, lastly, I would like to mention that you can gauge how the nerve recovers. Uh, from a sensory point of view, if you're treating a neuropathic pain nerve 
As you treat the neuropathic pain, uh, a couple of sessions later, you may find that the patient will be able to tolerate less current as the nerve starts to recover and becomes more normal. Uh, the sensation will become more prickly. Um, so that'll give you an indication, uh, a fairly objective indication of the recovery of the nerve. In case of a motor nerve, such as a nerve palsy, such as Bell's palsy, whatever, you will start to see that you will get a stronger contraction at a lower current. And that'll also give you an indication of the recovery of the nerve. That's it for this session. Uh, I hope it's been informative. Please don't hesitate to send us emails if you have more inquiries or suggestions for specific videos or protocols. Thank you very much.